Fording. Good afternoon, everyone. So we will start our lecture about uh, W reinforced concrete beams. So ano nga ba yung W reinforced concrete beams? Ngayon, yung W reinforced na concrete beams is hindi ito yung conventional na ginagawa natin na design na na situation because primarily ang aim natin sa mga concrete beams natin na design is singly. Pero syempre dahil sa code requirement na kapag meron tayong concrete beam, kailangan din ng stirrups. So yung stirrups ulit is yung shear reinforcement natin na naka-attach doon sa mga main bars natin. Same time, yung stirrups natin ngayon, wala siyang pwesto na Kumbaga parang walang holder yung stirrups not unless maglagay ka ng top bars doon sa concrete beam mo. Depende ngayon syempre kung nasaan yung puesto ng compression mo and tension. Pero ideally, sa actual site natin, although singly reinforced yung kinoconsider natin sa beam, nangyayari is nagiging doble siya because of the actual site situation. So ngayon, syempre, yung beams with both tensile and compressive reinforcements are called doubly reinforced beams. Bakit ngayon tayo nagdo-doubly reinforced? So number one, stirrup support. Just like what I said earlier, na hindi po pwede na yung stirrups ay walang holder. So karaniwan, yung stirrups holder natin is considered as compression bar. Kung nasa mid-span ka, syempre. Pero kung nasa supports ka, or kung cantilever beam yan, nasa baba ngayon yung compressive reinforcement mo. Primarily due to the direction of the moment and yung deformation natin. Aside from that, yung architectural requirements. Sa architectural requirements, kung mapapansin din natin sa actual na site situations, minsan yung mga plano na binibigay sa atin ng architect is... Uh, Baga kailangan natin pag-isipang mabuti kung ano ba yung magiging implications or ano ba yung space requirement or ano ba yung pupwedeng ideal na cross-section base doon sa gusto ng architect natin. So, syempre tayo, bilang engineers, hindi tayo yung gumagawa ulit ng architectural plans but we will make the architectural plans possible. Another thing is seismic requirement. So ngayon, ang trend ng design is kailangan talaga mag-resist ng seismic loads. Kasi as far as we know, yung gravitational load is panayan ng sinosolve natin. Maga ito yung laging design convention. Pero dahil nga nakakaligtaan yung mga lateral forces, yun ngayon yung nagkakos ng failure. Na kung baga parang dapat, laging kinoconsider yung seismic requirement as a prerequisite para doon sa design natin. Another thing is needed for torsion. Yung torsion, syempre, kumbaga bukod doon sa gravity loading, nangyayari din na nagtutwist yung structural members natin. So necessary na merong reinforcement para sa twisting such as yung compression bar and yung tinatawag natin na wet bar. Another thing is yung stiffness and ductility requirements. Mainly because kung maalala natin yung principle ng cracking ng concrete, madalas nagka-crack sa tensile area. Pero kung mataas yung load mo, at hindi kaya ng concrete beam, may chances din na magkakaroon na siya ng cracking sa ibabaw, mainly due to compression. Para maiwasan natin yan, kailangan natin maglagay ng, bukod doon sa tensile reinforcement, kailangan na rin natin ng reinforcement for compression. So yan yung reasons kung bakit kailangan natin ng double reinforced beams. Kasi kumbaga parang bukod doon sa span ng beam, baka mamaya limited din tayo sa cross-section. So saan tayo magko-compensate ng compressive force bukod doon sa concrete? So kailangan natin maglagay ng additional reinforcement for compression. 
Ngayon. Additional dyan is yung resisting couple. So kung maalala natin sa singly reinforced beams, ang consideration lang natin ng compression and tension in terms of stress block ay isang factor lang. Yung compression due to concrete and tension due to reinforcement. So ngayon, syempre, primarily due to dimensional limits, we need to uh, provide compressive reinforcements para doon sa beams natin. Ngayon, bukod doon sa pag-increase ng capacity ng beam to resist loads, yung compression na reinforcement can also give uh, a certain percentage of resistance in terms of deformation. So, paano natin madaderive yan? Punta tayo ngayon dito. As I said earlier, usually, ang ginagawa natin sa single reinforced beam is to analyze yung mga forces na involved in terms of tension and compression. Wherein, yung tension natin is primarily due to the steel reinforcement multiplied by the yield strength of steel. In terms of compression, ang kinoconsider natin dito is yung compression area na dala ng concrete. Wherein, yung compression ng concrete is alam natin to be 0.85 F'C AB. Ngayon, in case na meron tayong given na compressive reinforcement na A'S, alam natin na dapat may kinoconsider din tayong compression doon sa steel. Wherein... Kung ipoproject natin yan, iba ngayon yung path ng, pencil, ay ng compressive force ng steel as compared doon sa compressive force na dala ng concrete mo. Meaning to say, meron kang additional na couple force mula dito sa AS prime which is equal to the compression of steel or A prime S F5, where in A prime S is yung compressive reinforcement natin. Another thing, since meron tayong couple force, dapat of equal magnitude but differs in direction. Kung couple force man din. Given that this is a couple force, we can also say that there is tension doon sa compression na nararamdaman ng steel. Paano natin ngayon i-denote yan? Kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong total reinforcement na AS. Wherein, yung AS natin can be projected into two parts. In terms of tension na AS1 FY, mainly due because, na, because uh, the compression of concrete is equal to T1. Same time, the compression of steel will be equal to T2 or equal to AS2 FY. Mayon, ano yung mapapansin? Sa buong nominal moment na system dito sa buong concrete beam natin, we can actually say that the total nominal moment is equal to the nominal moment due to compression of concrete added by the nominal moment due to the compression of steel. Ayon. Given na same magnitude yung compression ng steel and yung T2, in what way natin malalaman ngayon yung quantity ng AS and AS2? Or paano natin malalaman itong quantity ng AS2? Anyone who can answer? Hmm. 
by just considering that CS is equal to T2, we can also consider that A prime S FY is equal to AS2 FY. Ano ngayon yung po pwede natin sabihin dyan? Ano ngayon yung amount ng AS2 or yung reinforcement dito sa second tension? We can now consider that A prime S is also equal to A S 2. Ngayon, given ulit na meron tayong notion na yung nominal moment 1 natin is equal, ay plus nominal moment at the second part is equal to the total nominal moment. Kung i-consider natin na this is in terms of reinforcement, na AS, we can tell that the total area of tens tensile reinforcement is equal to AS1 plus AS2. Nakukuha. So meron tayong dalawang areas in tension primarily because meron tayong dalawang different compressions Pero kung makita natin, yung T1 and T2 won't matter if kinoconsider natin yung compression ng concrete and compression ng steel, which is present since given tayo ng compressive reinforcement and predominantly, kailangan nating malaman kung ano yung extent ng compressive block natin. Given, of course, that this is bounded by the neutral axis. Ngayon, since we're talking about the nominal moment, paano natin ngayon kukumpute yung nominal moment natin? Alam natin na meron tayong dalawang nominal moments. Okay. So given na meron tayong centroid ng compressive force ng concrete and centroid ng tensile reinforcement, alam natin na this distance is equal to Z1 or equal to D minus A over 2. Pero paano naman ngayon kung yung compression? Okay. So bukod dito sa effective depth na alam natin na yung effective depth is from the top fiber hanggang tensile reinforcement, meron na rin tayong dagdag na variable. Ano yung dagdag na variable natin ngayon? Ang dagdag natin na variable ngayon is yung tinatawag natin na D prime. Where in D prime is yung effective depth of compressive reinforcement. Okay. Take note ulit na kapag merong prime yung variable natin, pag merong prime yan, this is in compression. Pero kung walang prime yung distance natin or yung variable natin, this is considered as Tension. Saan mo makikita yan? Yung A prime S, makikita mo rin na meron siyang prime. Therefore, this is in compression. Pero yung A S2, wala. Therefore, this is in tension. So yung mga palatandaan natin na yan, pwede rin natin gawing reference para malaman natin if ano ba dapat yung ginagamit natin or what not. Ngayon, given na meron tayong D prime, Paano natin ngayon malalaman yung value ng moment arm na Z2? Z2 now is equal to D minus D prime. Therefore, kung we're talking about nominal moment, pwede rin natin i-convert yan into the ultimate moment. 
ano lang yung dapat nating gawin doon sa ultimate moment? We need to multiply the strength reduction factor to the nominal moments present. So, meron tayong strength reduction factor. In what way ngayon natin is to solve yung nominal moment? The nominal moment at 1. So, let's try to assume yung mga compression yung present natin instead na yung tension. Because yung AS1 and AS2, kailangan mo pang isolve mula dito sa total tensile reinforcement. Diba? So, mas madaling rota na dito tayo sa compression mag hanap. Para kahit pa paano, yung AS prime lang yung kailangan natin. Instead na, kailangan pa natin hanapin yung AS1. Okay? So, meron tayong compression ng concrete na equal to 0 0.85 F prime C AB multiplied by D minus A over 2 plus Yung second dominal moment natin, which is equal to AS prime multiplied by FY multiplied by D minus D prime. Yan na ngayon yung ultimate moment for doubly reinforced beams. Ngayon, ano pa yung pupwede natin i-derive from here? So, paano natin malalaman ngayon kung tama ba lahat ng ginagawa natin before tayo mag-start, mag-solve ng ultimate moment? Before tayo mag-start ng ultimate moment, we need to determine if yielding ba yung bakal. Diba? So, if we need to determine if the reinforcement is yielding, ano yung dapat natin gawin? Check po sir yung value ng FS. Yung value ng FS. Ngayon, sa value ng FS, wala pa rin namang magbabago kung doubly reinforced yung beam natin. Mainly because kung titingnan natin yung sa strain diagram, ang dapat lang naman natin i-consider dito is yung maximum allowable na net tensile strain ng concrete, which is equal to 0 0.003. Then, same time, kung meron tayong consider in terms of tension, this is equal to Fy or Fs all over 200,000. Ngayon. Bukod doon sa amount of strain in terms of tension, paano ngayon yung sa compression ng steel? Kung yung compression ng steel natin ay nakatapat dito sa area na to. In what way natin masasolve yung compression ng steel? Kung mapapansin nyo, yung epsilon ng steel ulit is equal to the, the tensile strength divided by 200,000. Ano ngayon yung para sa steel in terms of compression? Ano yung 200,000 ulit? Yan yung modulus of elasticity po ng steel. ng steel. Ngayon, yung modulus of elasticity ba ng steel in compression, nag-iiba ba siya kapag ay, yung modulus of elasticity ng tension sa steel, nag-iiba ba yung modulus of elasticity kapag compression na yung steel? Hindi po. Hindi po. Okay. So therefore, same lang po Same lang as over. Yung gagamitin natin for compression at steel. So yung net tensile strain ng steel is equal to the tensile strain ay, the tensile strength of steel or we can say at this point is yung compression all over 200,000 pa rin. Provided 
na yung area natin is mula doon sa neutral axis papunta dito sa compression area ng concrete. Ngayon, given also na meron tayong effective depth mula doon sa tension or tensile reinforcement, same time, meron din tayong effective depth due to compression na D prime. Makikita natin na yung FS okay, is this in tension or in compression? Recap tayo. Tension po. Tension. Kasi walang wala pong prime. So FS natin, as we can all remember, yung FS is equal to 600 multiplied by the effective depth minus the actual compressive block divided by the value of C ulit. Wherein, syempre, alam natin na yung A is equal to beta 1C. Ngayon, in what way natin madederive yung F prime S? Yung F prime S, let's consider ulit yung strain diagram ng concrete in compression. We're in may maximum tayo na 0 0.003. Papansin natin, in terms of reinforcement, meron tayong F prime S all over 200,000. And syempre, 0 yung nasa neutral axis. Provided that the maximum distance is C and the distance from the compressive fiber up to the compressive reinforcement is equal to D prime. Yeah. In what way natin po pwede ngayon isolve? Or pwede natin i-derive? from this particular figure. Similar triangle po, sir. Similar triangles. So, kailangan nating mag-ratio and proportion ulit sa dalawang triangles natin. We're in. Meron tayong 0 0.003 all over C is equal to F prime S all over 200,000 divided by C minus D prime. Wait lang ah. Ayusin ko lang tong zoom ko. Anyway, back tayo. Ngayon. Dito sa ano natin, dito sa derivation natin, meron tayong 0 0.003 over C mula doon sa first triangle and then itong derived na ratio from the second triangle. Cross multiplying, we have 0 0.003 multiplied by C minus D prime is equal to Fs follow. F prime S rather, all over 200,000 multiplied by C. Ngayon, syempre, mapapansin natin na yung 200,000 ay medyo masakit sa mata. Therefore, kailangan natin siyang i-multiply both sides by 200,000 para lang makancel yung denominator na meron tayo. Now, we have 600 multiplied by C minus D prime is equal to F prime S multiplied by C. Therefore, we can say that F prime S is now equal to 600 multiplied by C minus D prime all over C. So sa doubly, bukod dito sa ultimate moment na nadagdag,
kailangan din natin i-consider yung value ng f prime s. So yung f s natin hindi naman nagbago since regardless kung ano yung figure ng concrete mo or kung ano yung reinforcement orientation, yung f s would remain the same because yung distance natin or yung effective depth natin is at of the same orientation na mula doon sa compressive fiber hanggang doon sa effective depth intention. Question with regards to FS or F prime S. Wala pa naman po. Wala pa naman. Okay. So, bukod dito, ngayon, paano natin malalaman kung singly or doubly? So after natin mahanap yung FS, okay? So yung FS dito, kung doubly reinforced yung beam natin, yung FS pa rin, yung magiging deciding factor natin para sa strength reduction factor and sa maximum reinforcement ratio. Okay? Hindi natin gagawing basis yung F prime S because Yung F prime S natin, kung maaalala nyo, ay baga hindi naman required na may compressive reinforcement yung beam natin as per calculations. Baga itong F prime S is madadagdag siya if ma-prove natin na doubly reinforced yung beam. So still, yung F S pa rin, yung magiging basis natin for computation ng strength reduction factor and the maximum reinforcement ratio. Mainly because kailangan natin din mahanap kung ano yung reinforcement condition. Kung in transition ba, compression controlled or tension controlled. Ngayon, balik tayo. Aside from determining if the reinforcement will yield, we we'll need to determine if the beam is singly or doubly. Ngayon, in what way ulit natin malalaman kung singly or doubly yung beam? Zero ako mas mababa po yung value kay raw max. Okay, so kailangan yung raw actual natin is less than or equal to the maximum amount of reinforcement ratio. Idagdag na rin natin at some point yung minimum reinforcement. Kasi yung minimum reinforcement lang din naman, chinecheck lang natin siya kung design yung procedure natin. Kasi tinitingnan lang natin kung yung actual ba ay mas mataas sa minimum. Kasi kung hindi naman mataas yung actual natin, sa minimum tayo magkakaroon ng basis for the actual reinforcement. Ngayon, yung raw actual natin, as far as we know, is yung amount of pencil reinforcement divided by the base and the effective depth. Pagpunta natin ng raw maximum, ano ba yung nagiging basis natin? Ang nagiging basis natin dito is yung Fs. Wherein, we must consider that meron tayong value na 3 over 8 multiplied by 0 0.85 F prime C beta 1 all over Fy kapag ang reinforcement natin is in transition in a uh, sorry if tension control or if yung fs natin is greater than 1000 but syempre if our reinforcement is in transition we have 3 over 7 multiplied by 0 0.85 f prime c beta 1 all over Fy kapag yung Fs naman natin is less than 1,000. Of course, alam natin na ito ay mangyayari lang if ang Fs natin is greater than Fy in general. Ngayon, yung raw minimum meron din tayong dalawang cases dito wherein this is 1.4 over Fy or 
0 0.25 square root of f prime c all over f1. Ngayon, yung raw actual natin would be considered as singly if less than. Pero ngayon, kung yung as over b din natin is greater than the raw maximum, therefore, this is doubly. Ngayon. In such a case na doubly yung reinforcement natin, ano na ba yung dapat nating gawin? Kapag doubly yung reinforcement natin, we need to solve for the value of A na hindi pa natin nasa-solve earlier. Kung mapapansin natin dito, meron tayong apat na dapat i-consider in terms of compression and tension. Alam din natin dito na yung amount of compression must also be equal to the amount of tension within the concrete beam. Therefore, we should know that 0 0.85 F prime C A B plus A prime S F Y is equal to A S 1 F Y plus A S 2 F Y. Ngayon, ano ba yung alam natin sa AS1 and AS2? Uh, same lang po nung value yung FY, sir. Kaya po. Kaya. Kaya pwede po. Pwede natin upper out. Na this is AS1 plus AS2 multiplied by FY. Aside from that, ano yung mapapansin natin doon sa AS1 and AS2? Balik ulit tayo dito sa stress blocks. Sa stress blocks natin, yung AS1 and AS2 would be the total amount of reinforcement ng buong system natin in terms of tension. Meaning to say, yung AS natin ulit is equal to AS1 plus AS2. Therefore, dito sa pagkuha natin ng summation ng forces between compression and tension, we can also say that the amount of compression is equal to the total amount of tension, which is equal to AS FY. Diba? Ngayon, considering that yung A is hindi pa natin alam, given na na-determine natin na this is doubly reinforced, we can now solve for the value of A, wherein makikita natin na 0.85 F prime C AB is equal to ASFY minus A prime S FY. Comes to show then na the value of A is equal to AS minus A prime S FY all over 0 0.85 F prime C B. Yung AS minus AS prime is yung AS1. Kung mapapansin natin, excess doon sa singly reinforced beam yung A prime S. Kaya pwede natin ngayon makonsider na dito sa stress block natin, palitan natin ngayon ng kulay, Yung first nominal moment is primarily induced by singly reinforced beam. Na, kino-consider mo ay compression ng concrete. 
na maja-justify natin na yung MN2 is yung compression ng steel or excess reinforcement from the singly reinforced B. Question so far. Bakit importante na malaman natin itong value ng A na to? Importante na malaman natin yung value ng A kasi ano? Kasi sa una, ina natin na yung beam ay singly reinforced. So therefore, Kapag na-prove natin na doubly reinforced yung beam natin, hindi na natin po pwedeng gamitin yung value ng A from the singly reinforced beam. So therefore, kailangan natin makakita ng way para ma-solve yung new value ng A considering the compressive reinforcement. Ngayon, kung meron tayong value ng A and value ng Fs sa lahat ng conditions natin, Paano naman natin ngayon madi-differ kung analysis or design ng problem? Okay. As we all know, kapag analysis yung problem, ang hinahanap natin is either yung ultimate moment capacity ng beam or yung forces na hinahanap natin in order for the beam to resist. Next is, kung design yung problem natin, ang hinahanap natin is primarily yung area ng steel reinforcement and yung dimensions. Ngayon, kung analysis yung problem natin, in what way tayo kukuha ng approach? Or paano natin malalaman kung doubly? Mapapansin ulit natin sa analysis, magiging doubly yung problem natin if yung actual reinforcement ratio is greater than the maximum that we know of. Pero kung design ang tinitingnan natin na problem, kailangan yung ultimate moment capacity, or sorry, yung ultimate moment na applied Meaning to say, yung mga inherent forces, kumuha ka ng moment doon, given yung mga factors, dapat yung applied load natin is greater than Tmn, wherein this is the allowable. Ano yung different? Ano yung difference between them? Yung applied natin is yung applied forces or yung applied moment. Wherein, yung allowable natin is yung capacity ng beam natin to resist. Nakukuha. So magkaiba yung approach natin sa analysis over sa design. Kung medyo nalilito, ganito na lang yan. Kung mapapansin niyo yung analysis, ang kinukuha natin ay moment and forces. So we need to say, binabaliktad natin yung design. Kailangan natin dumepende doon sa bakal para makuha natin yung ultimate moment. Whereas kapag design yung problem, kailangan natin umasa sa applied moment and allowable capacity para sa pagkuha ng reinforcement or dimensions. Questions before tayo mag-proceed sa first problem. Wala pa po, sir. Wala pa. Okay. So, proceed tayo sa first problem natin. Linawan ko na konti din. Okay. So, for our first problem, we need to determine the ultimate moment capacity of the given beam below if 
f prime c is equal to 20.7 megapascals and f y is equal to 276 megapascals. Ayan, in this given setup, we can see multi-layered beam, ay multi-layered reinforcements. Now, given natin is yung effective depth from the first layer alone. Hindi pa natin alam kung ano talaga yung effective depth. Kung maaalala ninyo, yung multi-layered beams ay medyo matagal isolve kung lahat ng layers ay i-consider mo. Pero we don't have much time. Therefore, may, mas, may approximate way to do that. An approximate way to do that is to determine the centroid of the reinforcement group. Meaning to say, if this six twenty-eight millimeter diameter bars have an effective distance of sixty millimeters, given na ang layer niya is three by three, ay three and three, paano natin ngayon malalaman yung effective depth? Ano ngayon yung effective depth mula doon sa compressive fiber natin? One hundred. 65. Hmm. 405. 405. Pagiging 405 millimeters yan kasi yung 435 na distance mula doon sa first layer, kailangan nating bawasan ng half ng 60. Since yung 435 or yung centroid dito sa lower layer natin, yung reference point natin. Therefore, the effective depth is equal to 405 millimeters. Ngayon, aside from this, meron pa tayong dapat hanapin. Kung ina-assume natin na this problem is doubly, yung 65 millimeters ngayon is yung effective compressive depth natin. So, paano ba tayo magsa-start ng problem kung doubly yung beam natin? Although hindi pa natin alam na doubly reinforced yung beam natin, ano yung dapat natin gawin? Kung halimbawa, hindi pa natin alam na doubly yan or wala pa tayong idea kung anong bakal yung nandito sa itaas. Ayan, pinigyan ko na kayo ng context clue. Sir, check mo na po kung singly or doubly using po yung panila po ng toactal at aromax. Okay. So kung yun yung gagawin natin, pupunta tayo sa ruta na ina-assume natin na yung beam ay singly. Given na syempre, kailangan natin i-prove na singly or doubly nga yung beam. So, kung ina-assume natin na singly yung beam, therefore, kailangan natin alamin yung mga forces na involved. So, take note na forces pa lang yung tinitingnan natin. Hindi pa tayo kukuha ng moment. Therefore, kailangan lang muna natin i-consider yung compression and tension. Compression due to concrete and yung tension due to the total amount of steel reinforcement. Ayun. Let's say, i-compute na natin in advance yung AS and A prime S. So, yung A prime S natin is equal to 2 multiplied by pi over 4 times 28 squared and yung AS natin is equal to 6 times pi over 4 times 28 squared. So makipindot po sa mga calculators ninyo yung A prime S and AS. So 2 times 0 0.25 pi times 28 squared meron tayong 1231.504 square mm and yung AS natin is 6 na 3694.513 
Ngayon, given this amount of reinforcements, sorry, yung tension natin is equal to ASFY or equal to 3694.513 multiplied by FY na 276. Pencil force is equal to ilan? One oh one nine six eight five point five eight eight. Six eight five point five eight eight newtons. Ayon. Yung compression natin is hindi pa natin gagamitin yung a prime s. Kasi ang unang nating step is to assume singly. So therefore, yung compression pa lang due to concrete, yung dapat natin i-consider, which is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C AB. Or meron tayong 0 0.85 multiplied by F prime C na 20.7 multiplied by A and yung base natin na equal to 250 millimeters. Kung sisimplify natin, compression is equal to 0 0.85 times 20.7 times 250 or equal to 4398.75. Okay. Ayun. In terms of compression and tension, since they are uh, couple forces, therefore, we can actually say that C is equal to T or 4398.75A is equal to 1019685.588. Therefore, the value of A is equal to ilan? Ngayon yung value ng A. Two three one point nine seven one. Two three one point nine seven one. Nine seven one millimeters. But yun, but parang iba yung nakuha ko. 231.813 po, sir. Ayun. 813. 813 rin kasi yung nakuha ko. Pasensya na. So, 231.81 millimeters. Baka may namali kang pindot. Check. Aba, aba. Ayan. Na check po. So, Aba. ano yung namali? Eh, sige, hindi ko natatrongin ko ano yung namali. Feeling ko talaga may napindot ng mali. Pero okay lang. Double check lang lagi sa answers kapag pala quiz. Nangyari rin sa akin yung sa answer key last time. Anyway, balik tayo. So, after this is acquiring the value of C. Kasi kailangan muna nating malaman kung yielding ba yung bakal or hindi. So, determine if yielding. Ngayon, ano yung importanting element to determine if the reinforcement is yielding? Alam natin na ang importante is yung value ng C. Kaya kailangan nating alamin kung ano yung value ng beta 1. Given that the compressive strength of concrete is equal to 20.7, therefore our beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85. Kasi yung F prime C natin is less than 28 megapascals. Therefore, the value of C is equal to beta 1 A. Ay, sorry, A over beta 1 rather. Or, meron tayong 231.813 all over 0 0.85 or equal to ilan? 
272.721 po. 272.721 millimeters. Now, upon solving for the value of C, we can now determine the value of Fs. We're in Fs is equal to 600 multiplied by B minus C all over C. Or equal to 600 multiplied by our effective depth is 405 minus 272.271 all over 272.271. Amount of tensile strength in steel natin is equal to? 292.490. Mega Pascals. So we check natin if this is greater or less. 292.493 is greater than 276. So yung Fs natin is greater than Fy, therefore, reinforcement is yielding. Now, ano yung condition? Since yung Fs natin is less than 1,000, condition natin sa reinforcement natin is ano? Tension. Controlled pa rin po. Controlled pa kapag less than 1,000? Compression control. Hindi. Ang compression control natin. Transition po. Okay. So transition. Compression control natin if yung FS natin is less than FY. Tension ay compression control na yan. Pero kung yung ano natin is ganito, nasa transition pa rin tayo. Kasi less than 1,000 naman, pero yung FS natin is still greater than FY. Ngayon, yung amount ng FS can be used to determine yung reinforcement condition and at the same time, ang makukuha natin dito is yung strength reduction factor and yung maximum reinforcement ratio. Ngayon, since in natin na singly reinforced yan, hindi pa importante na kuhanin yung strength reduction factor. Ang importante pa lang sa atin is makuha natin kung ano yung maximum reinforcement ratio. Kasi kailangan pa natin i-prove kung singly or doubly. Kung tama ba lahat ng mga sinolve natin dito. Okay, let's continue. Given that this is in transition, the maximum reinforcement ratio is equal to 3 over ano? 7. Oh, 3 over 7. So 3 over 7 times 0 0.85 F prime C beta 1 all over Fy Yan na ngayon yung raw maximum natin. So, equating, we have 3 over 7 multiplied by 0 0.85 times 20.7 times 0 0.85 all over Fy na equal to 276. Raw maximum now is equal to Zero point zero two three two 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 three two two. Okay. Tama. Okay. So after acquiring raw max, kailangan natin ngayon alamin kung ano ba yung raw actual. So raw actual is equal to AS all over DB. Nakuha natin yung AS natin earlier na equal to 3694.513. 
Sir, excuse me po. Sir, pa taas nga daw po ulit yung screen po. Yung sa may, ano po, uh, si po, 272.271 po siya, sir. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Gets. Wait lang ah. Kunin ko lang yung charger ng laptop ko dahil nag-lobat. Pero kung 0.721, ano yung answer? Same pa rin po sir kasi yung sa FS po natin sir ang ginamit po is 272.271 po. Hmm. Teka lang ha. I-check ko muna ulit. I-verify ko sa calculator. 231. Sorry. 231.813 divided by 0.85. Ang tamang sagot ay 272.721. 721. So, itong na sulat ko sa FS ay mali because dapat 721. Ano yung FS? Six hundred multiplied by four o five minus two seventy two point seven two one two nine one point zero two zero po sir. Point zero two. Ayan nakabawi na si Mr. Bison sa akin dahil nagamali rin ako. Point zero. Sir, balik two nine one point. Into 91. Yeah. Thank you. 291.020. Okay. Yeah. So, ngayon, since yielding yan, same din na in transition. So, medyo umano lang tayo ng figures. Okay. So, balik tayo. AS over BD for our actual is 3694.513. 513 na ba? Ayan, 0.513 all over BB. Base natin is 250 and effective depth is 405. Actual value of reinforcing ratio is equal to 0 0.0365. 0.365. Ayan, ano yung po pwede natin i-prove? Yung raw actual natin is greater than the max. Actual is greater than the maximum. Or dog yung beam natin. Ngayon, ano yung magiging implication niyan? Yung assumption natin kanina na singly is mali. So therefore, ang gagawin natin next is to ano na, to consider doubly. Mayon sa pag-consider natin na this is doubly reinforced, pwede na natin ngayon gamitin yung compressive reinforcement. Sabig sabihin may dalawang reinforcement na sa sistema natin like AS and A prime S. Na nasolve natin yung area earlier. So aside from the compression of concrete, we can also now consider compression of Steep. Papansin natin kanina, meron tayong compression ng concrete and dito sa baba natin ng sistema, meron tayong T1. Same goes with the compressive reinforcement na CS is now equal to A prime S F1. Considering na yielding yung reinforcement natin. Kaya Initially, FY yung ginagamit natin. And P2. 
So P1 and P2, meron tayong AS1, FY for T1, and AS2, FY for T2. Yung compression ng concrete natin would remain the same as 0.85 F prime C AB, pero hindi natin alam ulit yung bagong value ng A. Therefore, yung compressive ng concrete natin would remain the same as this value earlier, na 4398.75A. Ngayon, yung compression ng steel, pwede na nating masolve yan. Since meron tayong A prime S na equal to 1231.504, Multiplied by 276. Compression of steel is equal to ilan? 339895.1044. 339895.1044. 895.104 Newtons. Ngayon, is it necessary na kuhanin natin yung T1 and T2? Sino nagsabi? Balik same lang po sila, sir. Hmm? Same lang. Okay. So, same lang sila. So, anong po pwede natin gawin? Pwede na natin ulit Consider na yung compression or yung summation ng compression is equal to the summation ng tension. Taking note ulit na yung T1 plus T2 is equal to the tension. ba? Diba? Or yung tension natin can also be equal to ASF1. Since yun yung summation ng system natin. Ibig sabihin... Yung 4398.75A plus 339.895.104 is equal to yung tension kanina, which is 101.9685.1044. Sorry, I can only memorize much. 588. Kasi yung ASFY natin kanina is based on the 628mm diameter bars. Okay? So yun pa rin yung tension na gagamitin natin. 0.588. Now, the value of A, kung further simplifying, Nana tayo 4398.75A is equal to kung ta-transpose na natin yan, this is 101.9685.588 minus 339.895.104. A is equal to, tignan natin, 101.9685.588. 154.542. 154.542 millimeters. Eh sir, eh, paano kung ayoko nung ganitong rota mag-solve? Paano kung gusto ko na per variable? Okay lang din. Just use the formula we have derived earlier, which is this one. Same ano pa rin naman. Same principle pa rin. Kasi nang galing siya doon sa summation ng compression is equal to summation of tension. Pero syempre, mas madali yung ganito na isisimplify mo na kaagad yung mga terms mo. Kesa sa mag, ano pa tayo sa variables. Anyway, since we have a value of A, 
itong value ng A na to ngayon, yung tama. As compared doon sa value ng A kanina na we have na equal to 231.813. Mapapansin nyo medyo malaki yung discrepancy. From 231, we're just down to 154 mm. Now, Considering also that our beta 1 is still equal to 0 0.85, the value of C now is equal to 154.542 all over 0 0.85. Value of C is equal to 181.814. Po. 181.814. Ayan. Since this is doubly, we can now determine if the steel will yield. For both, ano, F prime S and F S. Kasi kailangan, tingnan na natin yung yielding ng compressive reinforcement. Therefore, dalawang values ng tensile strength yung kailangan nating kuhane. So both tensile and compressive yung kailangan nating tingnan in terms of steel. Wherein, we have another value of Fs kasi nag-iba na yung value ng C, which is equal to 600 multiplied by D minus C all over C pa rin. So meron tayong 600 multiplied by 405 minus 181.814 all over the same value na 181.814. Fs is now equal to 736.531 po. 736.531 megapascals. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung 736.531 ay higit na mas malaki kumpara dito sa 291 kanina. So itong 291, muntik na siyang pumunta sa compression. Onti na lang siya mula doon sa 276. Pero itong 736 is way far doon sa 276 na limit natin. Since yung Fs natin is greater than Fy, therefore, yielding yung compressive reinforcement natin. And another thing, what does this entail? Kung yung Fs natin is greater than Fy, but yung Fs natin is less than 1,000, transition. in transition pa rin yung reinforcement natin. Kung in transition yung reinforcement natin, hindi na natin ngayon kailangan kuhanin yung raw maximum at this point. Kasi, ano, ba't hindi na natin kailangan kuhanin yung raw maximum? Kasi kanina, na-prove na natin na Na doble po, sir. Na doble yung beam. Kasi kapag yung raw maximum, hindi rin naman magbabago na in transition pa rin yan. Hindi naman dependent sa value ng Fs yung equation ng raw maximum. Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi tayo magsasubstitute ng raw maximum or hindi tayo mag, ay ng uh, Fs or hindi tayo mag uh, sa substitute ng value ng C. Yung raw actual will be the same, yung raw maximum will still be the same. So, it is not necessary na mag-solve pa ng raw maximum for the second time around. Ano yung hindi natin sinolve kanina na kailangan natin ngayon? Given that the reinforcement is in transition. Yung reduction factor. Yung reduction factor. Ngayon, yung reduction factor natin is this is so, since the reinforcement is in transition, strength reduction factor is now equal to 0 
plus the quantity of 0 0.25 multiplied by fs minus fy all over 1000 minus fy. Now, meron tayong 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 736.531 sorry, minus 276 all over 1,000 minus 276. Strength reduction factor is now equal to 0 0.809 po. 0 0.809. As compared doon sa 0 0.9 na tension control. Now, aside from solving for the yielding reinforcement at tension, we also need to solve for the yielding steel in compression. So F prime S as derived earlier is equal to 600 multiplied by C minus D prime all over C or equal to 600 multiplied by 181.814 Minus. Ang D prime natin earlier, balik ulit tayo, is equal to 65 millimeters. So minus 65 all over 181.814. F prime S is now equal to 385.8. 495. 495 mega pascals. Now, since F prime S is greater than Fy, therefore, this is yielding. We need to say we can use Fy as the value of the, ten, the compression in this particular steel reinforcement. Sabi sabihin, yung nominal moment natin or yung ultimate moment natin would depend on value of Fy na 276. So last step natin is to determine MU. Since na-fulfill natin lahat ng correct assumptions. Okay? Sir, question, eh paano kung less than? Paano sir kung not yielding to? Ano yung gagawin namin? Okay. Kapag not yielding itong reinforcement, ano yung dapat gawin? Same lang din sa singly na hahanap ka ulit ng bagong value ng C. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, uulit ka na naman sa pagsasolve. Ibig sabihin pala, yung 181.814 na to ay mali. Hahanap ka ng value ng C na magsasatisfy dito sa F prime S is less than Fy. Okay. So, itong RCD ko mapapansin nyo, this is iterative. Iterative meaning to say, paulit-ulit tayo ng ginagawa hanggang sa tumama na yung assumptions natin. Now, we need to determine lastly yung MU. Alam natin na yung ultimate moment is equal to P MN1 plus P MN2. Now, since halos lahat naman ng forces dito ay present na, pwede na natin solve yung ultimate moment. So, meron tayong phi multiplied by 0 0.85 F prime C AB multiplied by B minus A over 2 plus phi multiplied by A prime S FY multiplied by B minus B prime. 
Kung mapapansin nyo, pumunta tayo doon sa ruta na compression ang kinoconsider natin rather than the tensile part. Kasi sa tensile part, kailangan pa natin himayin kung ano yung value ng T1 and T2 or kung ano ba yung value ng AS1. Kasi yung AS2, alam natin na yung AS2 is equal to A'S. So, depende pa rin. Kayo pa rin bahala kung anong mas komportable or mas madali for as long as nag equal yung forces in compression and tension. Now, substituting, meron tayong 0.9, ay sorry, 0.809 multiplied by 0.85 prime CAB. So, meron tayong 0.85 multiplied by 20.7 multiplied by A. A natin is equal to 154.542. And then base natin na 250 multiplied by the moment arm na 405 minus 154.542 all over 2 plus 0 0.809 multiplied by A prime S. Ang A prime S natin is 1231.5. Sorry, hindi ko kabisado because I can only memorize much. 1231.504 and FY natin 276 multiplied by D minus D prime na 65. Ultimate moment is equal to ilan? 273726577.1273726577.1 newton millimeters or equal to 273.727 kilonewton so, ito ngayon yung final answer natin for problem number one. Questions? Clarifications or violent reactions? Sir, kapag ka po doubly, minsan may mga cases pa rin po ba na kinakonsider si unit weight ng countries? Meron pa rin. Thank you po. Meron pa rin cases na din. Questions pa? Okay. Kung analysis yung problem, tapos meron tayong weight ng concrete, ang iti-check nyo dyan, Kumbaga, it is a problem of adequacy eh. Kasi iti-check mo kung safe ba or hindi yung concrete beam mo. Para lang malaman kung safe, okay, note ah. If yung MU natin is less than or equal to phi M N. We're in, inuulit natin, yung ultimate moment is yung applied load and yung phi mn is yung allowable. Okay? So kapag may mga problems na ganyan, halimbawa, may Problems sa analysis na minsan sinasabi na, oh, for example, dito sa particular beam na to, ang MU raw is, ang applied moment daw natin is 300 kilonewton meter. Is the beam safe or not? Ready? 
300 kilonewton per meter yung applied ay kilonewton meter yung applied natin. For example. Tapos yung ultimate moment natin na nakuha, this is yung allowable. Ngayon, ang question ko, is the beam safe or not? Hindi po. Hindi safe kasi yung applied natin is greater than the allowable. Okay? So, ganun lang yung ibang problem. Magbibigay ako ng problem set na ganito. So, might as well, inano ko na. Sinabi ko na rin. So, para lang hindi confused, ito ay example la. Example, 300 kilonewton meters. Yung applied natin, tapos yung allowable natin is just 273 according to this answer. Therefore, hindi safe yung beam natin. Paano mo sasabihin yun? Say, teka, iyanan na natin. Canvas size. Ano ko lang ha. Ayusin natin yung canvas para lang maayos. Okay, so for example, yung MU natin na applied is equal to 300 kilonewton meters. Tapos na nakuha natin is yung allowable na 273. Since MU is greater than TMN, which is this one, therefore, inadequate yung beam natin or not safe. Kasi yung MU natin na 300 is greater than 273.727. Nakuha? Sir, saan ko ilalagay yung weight ng concrete? Ayun yung isa sa mga interesting questions. Eh. Sir, yung, yung weight ng concrete ay ilalagay mo dito sa applied. Kasi yung applied load mo is yung loads plus self-weight. Pero this is factor. Okay. Teka lang, may chats pala na hindi ko nakita. Sir, sasagot ko sa ah, okay. Nakita ko na ito. Tanong pa. Wala na? Wala na po, sir. Wala na. So, malinaw lahat. Okay. Proceed tayo dito sa next problem natin. Okay. So, given na meron tayong A prime S and A S na dalawang 20 and 4 to 28. Sir, is it possible sa actual na magkaiba yung bar diameter? Answer is yes. Depende kung talagang wala ng option yung uh, contractor or yung engineer na maglagay ng same diameter. Pero syempre, mahirap, na, mahirap gawin na magkaiba yan kasi number one, wala nang time yung mga trabahador mo na tingnan pa kung anong diameter yung gagamitin. Baka kasi ma masyadong, ano, uh, masyadong risky or confusion yung ganitong klaseng setup. Baka mamaya 28 yung ilagay dito sa taas tapos 20 na lang yung ilagay doon sa baba. So, masyadong risky. Ngayon, given na meron tayong doubly reinforced beam according dito sa setup, 
na may F prime C na 27.6 and F Y na 414, we can actually or initially uh, compute for A prime S and A S. So yung A prime S natin is 2 multiplied by pi over 4 times 20 squared. And yung A S natin is 4 times pi over 4 times 28 So yung mga area of steel reinforcement natin, kung titignan natin, is 2 times 0 0.25 pi times 20 squared or naroon tayong 628.319 mm squared. Pasensya na pala kanina, by the way, kung hindi ko nabasa yung nasa chat box kasi na-hide ko yung ano, na-hide ko yung panel ko. So, feeling ko mamaya ko pa mababasa yung chat, pero sige, i-project na natin yung menu bar. Anyway, let's go back. So, yung AS natin is 4 times 0 0.25 pi times 28 squared, or meron tayong 2463 0.009 square millimeters. Ngayon, just like any other problem, ang kailangan nating unahin for this particular uh, setup is to assume singly. Mahirap na mag-dwell agad tayo na doble to. Baka kasi mamaya sa effort na sobrang haba, mali pala yung sagot mo. So dun tayo sa sure na rota. Balik tayo. If we assume that this beam is singly, we can easily solve for the inherent forces na nandito sa concrete beam natin. Where in C is still equal to 0 0.85 F prime C A B or equal to 0 0.85 multiplied by 27.6 times A times our base na 360 millimeters. Compressive force is now equal to 0 0.85 times 27.6 times 360 or 8445.6. Now, in terms of tension, we have AS FY or equal to 2463.009 multiplied by 414. Amount of tensile force is equal to 463.009 times 414 or 101. 9685.726 newtons. Now, solving for compression is equal to tension, we can now have 8445.68 is equal to 1019685.726. Six. Value of A is equal to ilan? One twenty point three seven three six four. Okay, one two zero point seven three six millimeters. Ayon. Considering that f prime c is equal to 27.6, our beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85, since f prime c again is less than 28. Therefore, the value of c is equal to 120.736 all over 0 0.85 or equal to 142.04 142.042 
millimeters. Ayan. Upon determining C, we can now solve if the steel will yield. So determine if yielding. To determine if the steel will yield, we need Fs. Fs is equal to 600 multiplied by D minus C all over C. Sa case natin, 690 yung buong nominal depth. So wala pa tayong effective depth. In this case, the reinforcement is 75 millimeters from the tensile fiber or dito sa beam socket natin. So the effective depth is equal to 690 minus 75 or equal to 615 millimeters. Balik tayo. So FS is equal to 600 multiplied by 615 minus the value of C, which is equal to 142.042 all over 142.042. Value of FS is equal to 1997.823. 3. 3. Mega Pascals. So, since Fs is greater than Fy, therefore, this is yielding. Now, yung case natin, since yung Fs natin is, ano, is it great? greater than? Po. Greater. So, therefore, compression. Po. Tension, tension control. Tension po. control. So, kung tension controlled siya, ano yung makukuha natin doon sa condition na yan? Reduction factor po na 0 0.9. Yung reduction factor na 0 0.9 and yung sa raw max po na 3 over 8. 3 over 8. So, meron tayong 3 over 8 multiplied by 0 0.85 F prime C, beta 1, all over F1. Ngayon, solving for rho maximum, we have 3 over 8 multiplied by 0 0.85 times F prime C of 27.6 times beta 1 na 0 0.85 pa rin, all over Fy na we have 414. Pro maximum is equal to 0 0.0181. 0.0181. So after solving for raw maximum, we need the value of raw actual, which is equal to AS all over BD. Ang value ng AS natin kanina is, sorry, we have... 2463.009. So 2463.009. Well, over BD, our base is 360 millimeters. Tama nga ba? Na 360? Yes. 360 multiplied by effective depth na 615 millimeters. Raw actual is equal to ilan? 0 0.0111. 111. Ngayon, ano yung mapapansin? Yung raw actual natin. Less than po siya kay P max po. Less sa raw maximum. So therefore, this is? Singly reinforced singly. po. Ngayon, 
kailangan pa ba nating isolve yung para sa doubly or hindi na? May role pa ba si A prime S dito sa setup natin even na yung reinforcement natin is in the round? Hindi na po, sir. Hindi na. So, no need to solve for the moment capacity due to compression. Therefore, ang last step na natin ngayon ay determine the ultimate moment. Kasi, ano, hindi na din natin kailangang isolve na yielding or not yielding yung compressive reinforcement. Kasi, yung assumption natin na singly ay tumama. So, yun. Ibig sabihin lang kapag doubly reinforced yung beam natin, wag tayong magsosolve ka agad ng ina-assume natin na doubly. So, yun yung biggest realization ko yesterday doon sa lecture na nalimutan ko. So, nakakahiya doon sa professor ko dati nung college. Ngayon, after we determine the value of uh, rho actual and maximum, we can now solve for the ultimate moment even that our beam is singly reinforced. Now, the value of ultimate moment is either ano, phi mm and equal to phi either compression or tension multiplied by D minus A over 2. Kasi singly naman yung beam natin. Pwede na ngayon natin isolve na this is equal to 0 0.9 multiplied by either compression or tension. Pero kanina may sagot na tayo sa tension na tensile force. So therefore, yun na lang din yung i-substitute natin. So, 1019-685.726 multiplied by B minus A over 2. Wherein our value of A is equal to 120.76 all over two. Ultimate moment capacity is equal to five zero eight nine nine five three zero zero point two. Five zero eight nine nine five three zero zero point two point two newton millimeters or equal to five zero eight point nine nine five kilonewton meters. So, yan na ngayon yung final answer natin for problem number two. Ano? Sabi sabi yan itong problem na to, basically, hindi naman talaga siya doubly reinforced. Although kasama siya sa double reinforce because meron tayong present na A prime S pero upon solving pala, singly reinforced lang pala siya. So may mga ganyan tayo sa mga quizzes natin na paparating na ipaprove mo muna kung singly siya ganyan para kahit pa paano hindi sayang yung effort natin na mag-solve kung diretso agad na do. Ano? Sir, in real life po, lahat naman po ng BIM, di ba? Actually, doubly. Mm -hmm. In real life po, puro doubly. Kasi kailangan po ng... Kailangan ng holder ng stirrup. Yes. Although may nakausap ako na structural engineer na ang ginagawa talaga nila sa pagsasolve sa Lasal to, by the way. Ang ano, ang ginagawa sa pagsasolve sa uh, design firms, yung AS ay buo ng beam. Kumbaga parang, di ko sure kung, nalimuta ko lang kung included yung stirrups doon sa AS. Pero ang ginagawa nila, sa pagkuha ng raw actual, yung AS na sinasabi nila is for both compression and tension. So lahat na ng total na nandito sa beam. Pero syempre, hindi muna natin 
ito tackle yon because ano we eh, nandito tayo sa foundation course ka pa lang or basic course ka pa lang so that's why limited pa tayo dito feeling ko yung principle na to na kasama lahat is baka sa second semester niyo na kasi may second sem kayo na iba pang RCD for structural engineering majors. Yeah. Tanong pa. Sir, yung sinasabi niyo po na yon, yung po ba yung kapag ka po sa design na po? Kasi po di ba sa design kinukuha po natin yung mismong number po ng bakal po. Yes. Kapag-tide. Kapag ka po, di ba, nung nakaraan po na nag-solve po tayo ng design sa singly, yung sinasolve po, po natin na number ng bakal, yung nasa may tension part lang po. Yun. So dito, kapag, kapag nasa ano ka na, sa actual, ganun yung ginagawa nila. Pero kung by principle tayo or by theory tayo, na dapat sundin, ang ginagawa natin sa design ng doubly reinforced is iba pa yung makukuha nating AS para sa tension, iba rin yung A'S na para sa compression. So doon sa next example natin, doon natin malalaman kung paano. So yung next example natin na design nga pala by the way is asynchronous. So tomorrow ko isasend for everyone kasi nataon na may meeting ako bukas sa school. So supposedly ngayon dapat yan kaso syempre considering that the maximum attention span ng tao ay within 2 hours lang kaya I decided na gawin natin asynchronous or titignan ko kung makakapagklase pa ako tomorrow. So I'll keep you posted. Thank you po sir. Tanong pa? Wala na? Wala na po muna ulit, sir. Wala na muna ulit. Okay. So, kung wala na kayong tanong, a uh, few announcements. Wait lang. Dito natin ilagay sa ilalim para medyo masaya. few announcements. So, sa mga announcement natin, yung schedule ng quiz 2 and schedule ng midterm exam. Ang quiz 2 natin, ang topic would be uh, doubly reinforced beam analysis pa rin. We're in, ang schedule natin is on April 29 from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Asynchronous pa rin yan, huwag kayong mag-alala. So pwede pa kayong magtanungan pero syempre, okay, may napansin ako nung ano, nung quiz 1. Although, ano naman eh, naiintindihan nyo yung topic na ultimate stress design. Itong processes na to, naiintindihan ninyo eh. Ang, naging, ang nakita ko major problem doon sa quiz ninyo last time is, number one, hindi tumitingin or hindi nagbabasa ng direction yung iba. Malinaw na sinabi ko na box your final answers. Number two, ang final answer doon is nominal moment. Hindi binasa ng iba. Ang, binasa, ang binax ng iba is yung ultimate. So sayang yung score, di ba? Tapos, another thing is yung shear end moment diagram. So yun guys, mas okay na habang nagre-review kayo for this particular quiz, mag- practice na rin kayo ng mga beams for shear and moment. Huwag kayong magpa-practice ng varying load dahil hindi ako magbibigay ng triangular na distributed load. Hanggang uniformly distributed lang tayo. Okay, so mag-try kayo ng iba't ibang support conditions. Yun yung suggestion ko. Kasi basically dito sa mga tinuturo ko, naintindihan nyo naman. Although syempre yun, yung mga yung mga fundamentals na gano'n, hindi na ako makakapagbigay because we're gearing towards another year level. Yan. 
Now, aside from that, yung midterm exam natin. Yung midterm exam natin ay singly reinforced beams and doubly reinforced beams. Ang topic is analysis and design. Siyempre, yung analysis and design, hindi ko sasabihin kung ano yung lalabas dyan. Although, siyempre, alam natin na yung singly and doubly possible because kailangan mo muna mag-assume ng singly eh. Pero yung analysis and design, hindi ko sasabihin kung ano dito sa dalawa yung lalabas. So, may as well, arali na lahat. Ang midterm exam schedule natin is on May 3. 2021. Time is 3 to 6 p.m. Any clarifications or violent reactions with regards to this particular decision? Okay, kaya nag na ako kasi nakita ko na delayed tayo ng two weeks. Baga parang yung delay natin is yung number one, yung inexplain ko yung diagnostic test or yung duration na may nag enroll pa. And yung Holy Week. So, hindi ko na-anticipate na madadalay tayo ng two weeks out of that. Tanong po. Or violent reactions dito sa schedule. Wala na? Wala naman po, sir. Okay. So kung wala na kayong tanong, so let's declare this class dismissed. I will send yung lecture video and yung mga slides na to earlier. And ingat po tayo parate. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you po sir. Thank you po sir. Stay safe po.